Hi there, let's talk about quantum entanglement. What is it? How is it started? What is everything going on with that? Let's dive in and find out. So quantum entanglement is a dependency of two particles that when one is affected, the other also reacts. And the transmission of this information happens at least 10,000 times the speed of light. That is right, more than 10,000 times the speed of light. That's crazy fast. And quantum entanglement has a variety of uses. For example, the quantum Zeno effect, where when you cause something to happen to one, the other reacts. And essentially, you end up with the transmission of a one or a zero when you do this. Recently, in recent years, there was a group of scientists who had transmitted part of an image with a acceptable amount of data loss using the quantum Zeno effect, using counterfactual communication. It's really cool. If you get a chance, check it out. All right, so how do you cause a pair of photons or particles to become entangled? The first way is from birth. And a long time ago, there was an experiment done with calcium where you energize it or you create a high energy state and you do not let the electrons rest. So that instead of emitting one photon, the, the atom decays and emits two, but in opposite directions with a variety of or opposite polarization. As a result of this, though, it's slow and two, you have no idea where the heck your photons went which is a bit of an issue. Photons are the best carrier to start the quantum entanglement process because they're the easiest to get our hands on. All you have to do is apply some energy, excite electrons, and as they drop down to their ground level, or decay in this case, they release photons. And a second method, which was developed later, is called parametric down conversion. It's quite interesting. Using a nonlinear optical crystal and a laser to convert one high energy photon into two and each of the resulting photons has 50% the energy of the first. And these photons are then entangled. Second generation is when you take two quantum entangled photons and fire them at two atoms. These atoms, which if possible to absorb these photons, then become entangled with each other. So second generation is something we can actually hold on to because photons are always flying around at the speed of light, which is a bit of a problem trying to catch a fly in the house with an oven mitt. It's a little bit difficult. So that's how you get second generation. Second generation is best and easiest to get from, from birth entanglement. Now, before we go on to accidental and via interaction, let's talk about upspin and downspin really quick. There are two states in the quantum field or the quantum fluctuation of a particle. They are either spinning up or they are spinning down. It's easiest to visualize the spin as an actual spin in a direction, but the thing is we live in a very 3D, if not four-dimensional space, if you include time. The reaction from input causes an output of a one or a zero, which is something that will be applicable in quantum computing in the future. Let's hold on to that one for later though. So, accidental entanglement is when you excite two atoms and they both release photons and then you force those photons from those two different atoms to interact with each other in a very specific way such a way that causes them to entangle the original atoms it's crazy how that one works i won't get into depth here but it's a very interesting one and it would be interesting to research later and the last one is via interaction basically when you cause two atoms to interact with each other and force them to depend on each other, thereby becoming entangled. So we've discussed the quantum Zeno effect, we've discussed the speed limit, the four generally known forms of causing a pair of entangled particles, and also some of the specifics in causing an entangled pair from birth. What are some general applications that we have today other than shipping images back and forth via two devices? Well, another is a satellite system created by the Chinese which 
I'm sure you've heard something about them teleporting material from space to Earth, but that's not quite right. That was sensationalism. Welcome to the internet. So what they do in this satellite to create the quantum cryptography is create a pair of quantum entangled photons and then fire them at two ground stations, like a laser. And if you try to measure a quantum state, you then cause it to collapse. It's just how it is. If you try to find where a photon is and find the photon, you then cause the quantum state to collapse and you cause it to become a particle. Whereas an electron, if you do the same, you force the electron to be in one position. Superpositioning is when it's a fuzz of probability where it's going to be. So when you observe the photons, or essentially try to spy on this uh, cryptographic network that the Chinese have created, you then cause the quantum entanglement to collapse. And therefore, they know that somebody tried to spy, but it is impossible to get the data because the moment that you tried to hack into it, you collapse the security system and they had to create a new encryption pair. It's pretty cool. So that's quantum entanglement in a nutshell. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. I'm looking forward to your questions on this one. This topic, I adore. Till next time.